Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of IBD Heal, a podcast brought to you by High Carb Health. I'm your host Shukul and today's episode is an interview with Dr. Nandita Shah. Dr. Nandita is an inspiring woman. She is the founder of Sharon India, an organization that works with thousands and thousands of people to help improve their health, a special focus being on diabetes, but they have been helping people all over India and across the world with many, many different health conditions. She also has a very profound understanding of health and how the body heals and works in a very similar way to us at High Carb Health. So her understanding coming from a medical background to also understanding how the body heals and how to implement healing into the body is uh, really amazing. And to discuss uh, all about health with her was fantastic. I think you guys will really enjoy this interview and also listening to the story of how she was able to heal from guillain barr syndrome naturally without any medications. Just wait till you hear what she went through as she healed herself. So let's hear a little bit about Dr. Nandita. Dr. Nandita Shah, the recipient of the prestigious Nari Shakti Puraskar in 2016, is the founder, director and trustee of Sharon. She founded Sharon in 2015 with the aim of helping people to heal themselves. Wouldn't it be great if a lot more doctors focused on helping people heal themselves and the planet by connecting to animals and nature? Sharon is now a vibrant and growing social enterprise whose vision is to build a culture of health and has already positively impacted more than 100,000 lives in India and overseas. Dr. Shah is a registered medical doctor specialized in homeopathy from the CMP Homeopathic Medical College in Mumbai. Having always been interested in natural health, she chose homeopathy because it was a treatment which did the least harm. Graduating in 1981, she had a thriving practice in Mumbai and also regularly, regularly taught all over the world at seminars and conferences. I have been lucky enough to work with Sharon, go to India and deliver uh, some of their workshops and also listen to Dr. Nandita Shah speak. And she is a real inspiration to all of us here at High Carb Health and I am sure everyone listening is going to enjoy all the knowledge she's going to give to us today. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Nandita Shah onto the show. Thanks, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. And I have a very special guest here with me, Dr. Nandita Shah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We've known each other for a long time and yeah. we've worked together, so it's really nice to be here with you. Absolutely. It's a real honor to have you on and um, you guys really are in for it. work that you do. So. Oh, thank you very much. So what we're going to do today, this is a very special show today because Dr. Nandita Shah is an expert when it comes to plant-based diets and especially working with people who have diabetes uh, among many other conditions. So we're going to be learning a lot about what is diabetes and, and how it works and the way to heal it and reverse it. And, you know, you've even written a book about how to heal and reverse diabetes. So we'll talk about, you know, all of those things. But to start off with, why don't we talk a little bit about your journey into plant-based diets and, you know, coming from uh, a background, homeopathic background, uh, how, what led you to start to think about you know, first of all, changing to a plant-based diet and then seeing that maybe this was a very powerful approach to helping people heal. So I chose homeopathy. In India, you have to be a registered medical doctor to practice homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And I chose homeopathy because I didn't want to use harmful chemical treatments because I always believed in as natural as possible. And I mm -hmm. always believed in um, good diet for health only thing is that I grew up with a lot of dairy and I thought dairy was good for you and just like many other Indians you know I was having an, a so-called normal diet hmm? but um, I realized in my career after some time that not only do uh, allopathic medicines not work because you know if someone gets diabetes or high blood pressure, they're on medicines their entire life, which means that the only thing that the medicine does is control the illness and it never solves the illness, right? 
So, and I realized that even with homeopathy, it was similar, though I had expected much more that, you know, people would come back with the same problems, maybe after three months or even after three years, but they would have the same problems and I would be giving out medicines. So I realized that until we get to the cause of the illness, we can't remove it. And uh, I didn't turn plant-based when I understood this. I turned plant-based because I understood the, you know, I grew up as a vegetarian and I was so happy to be a vegetarian because I thought that I was not harming any animals and the very sight of dead animals in a supermarket made me think that, you know, what kind of hell is this? But um, I was so happy that I was vegetarian until I found out that in order to be vegetarian, cows have to be impregnated forcefully and their babies are taken away from them so that we can drink the milk. And so this didn't fit in well with me. And that's when I stopped the dairy. But when I stopped the dairy, I started seeing all the um, articles which talked about why dairy was not good, sometimes in medical journals. And, you know, reading a medical journal is like reading a newspaper. You don't really see everything. You know, you just see things which you kind of already know. And so I hadn't been seeing these articles before, but when I stopped dairy, I started seeing how the countries with the highest consumption of dairy also have the highest incidence of osteoporosis. And at that time I was teaching all over the world and I knew it to be true because I had patients from all over the world. So I, I could make the connection immediately that yes, you know, in the US and in Europe, people, places where people have a lot more dairy, even though India is a dairy consuming country, at that time, cheese was very prevalent in the West and not so much in India. And um, cheese, one ounce of cheese is 16 ounces of milk, you know, so it's a concentrated form of dairy. And so uh, I knew that those countries were the countries with the maximum osteoporosis, right? So I made the connection and as soon as I made the connection, I started reading more and more. And Shukul, you were telling me about my Guillain-Barre and I did have an episode of Guillain-Barre, which is an autoimmune disease. And, you know, since my friends are doctors too, they all told me that I should be admitted in hospital, but I decided to heal myself without the use of any of those medicines or even going to a hospital, I just went to the hospital for a diagnosis. And I was treating myself at home with the help of, um, you know, I had someone in the day and someone at night, the hel a helper, because I was in a position where I couldn't even turn over in the bed. So I was totally, my whole body was paralyzed. But I knew that if I understood the cause of the illness, and worked at the level of cause, then I would be well. And so that's what I did. And that inspired me to do it more and more for my patients. Should I continue or would yes, you like Yes, please. To ask? No, no, okay. keep going, this is great, yeah. That inspired me to do it more and more for my patients. And, um, you know, I, I began to realize because I didn't realize it before, I thought that you know, humans were meant to be omnivores and uh, I was a vegetarian or whatever. But then I realized that, you know, every animal eats according to instinct. And if we were to go to a farm or an orchard and see fruits and vegetables, instinctively, we want to pick them. But even if you see green fields of wheat and rice, our mouth doesn't water. And that's because Wheat and rice is not our food. Every animal can eat their food raw. And we can't eat wheat and rice raw. And that's why people have gluten intolerance, you know, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And meat is the same way. Like if you see a chicken walk by or a goat or a cow or a lamb or a pig, your mouth doesn't water, right? It's only when, I mean, honestly, even in the supermarket, our mouth doesn't water, but only when it's cooked, and put in front of us on a plate, it might look tempting, right? 
so this yeah. is not our food just as wheat and rice is not our food and milk you know somehow we grew up thinking that milk is the best food or nature's best food whatever but you know if you think about it every animal produces milk only for their young and we are not calves and so it's no wonder that there's so much lactose intolerance right so yes. if we are eating foods that are not natural to our species we are going to get sick and you know we even see nut allergies and honestly if you lived in nature and you were sitting under a walnut tree and you had to open those walnuts but you only had stones to open them with you wouldn't eat a whole lot of walnuts it's just that you know now we get them shelled and ready in a package so we can chomp on them and consume a lot of them but truly they're not our food right mm. so uh, we also tell our clients to consume no more than 10 nuts a day because walnuts are easy to open but if you've seen almonds they're more difficult and cashews almost impossible without mm. the use of heat and pistachios right. definitely have to be cooked in order to open them isn't it mm -hmm. so nuts are not our food so we always advise people to eat foods that are suitable to our species and it's so amazing how quickly they get well like without medicines they get well depending of course on what is their illness and how long they've had it but at a surprisingly quick rate absolutely and you guys are doing an amazing job with your retreats and your counseling sessions and just teaching people what it means to actually understand the root cause you know just like what we're doing is just trying to get people to realize that when you stop harming the body it's allowed allows itself to heal and you can you know get out of its way and and do those things which is obviously such an important thing and the reason that most people aren't willing to change is because they think it's a deprivation mm. and so our job is also to show them that it's not a deprivation for example you know we just came back you were talking about our retreats and i just got back from our 21 day retreat mm -hmm. which this year was in october because of the pandemic and all of that otherwise it's usually in june and september uh, and you, you know during our retreat we have buffets with all different kinds of food and everyone gets back thinking that oh this is easy we have cooking classes every day as well so they know that it's easy they know that it's not a deprivation and now you can get so many products that help you know when i became a vegan there was nothing like that mm. but now you can get so many products that can help you stay on the path why would you choose to be sick right exactly right exactly right so you know i want to actually uh drill down a bit more into your healing journey before we go into some of your exciting work in in especially about diabetes but you know what was it that made you think that actually i'm going to let my body heal and can you talk about some of the kind of experiences you had as your body got better oh well um it, it, actually my thought process for that didn't start there it started already as a homeopath you know because homeopath yeah. is a homeopathy is a much more natural way of healing mm -hmm. and so you know but being a doctor i already knew the current treatment at that time for guia bare would be immunoglobulin immunoglobulins and steroids and i knew that this is something that's harmful to the body and i knew that the body always works to heal because homeopathic medicine stimulates the body to heal so i knew that the body always works to heal and i knew everything about gia bare so honestly i was lucky to be a doctor as a patient you know so i knew everything and i knew that gia bare is an acute autoimmune disease which can result in death or full recovery so i knew that there was a chance of full recovery you know mm. even though there was a chance of death because the paralysis doesn't just extend to your limbs it also extends to your lungs and internal nervous system autonomous nervous system which means it can affect your heart and brain and and it did you know but i 
I knew that in my mind, there was no other way, you know, and mm. for my particular illness, I started asking myself, what were the causes? Mm -hmm. And truly, the causes of Guillain-Barre and autoimmune diseases is known because autoimmune diseases are caused by foreign proteins. And what are the foreign proteins? Vaccinations. But of course, animal products, because they're not meant for our species. Now, I was already um, at that time vegetarian, almost vegan. <clears throat> but I did have a dog bite and I went in for a vaccination, you know. But chicken, for example, is a known cause of Guillain-Barre. You know, it's written in our textbooks as well. So, and, and honestly, it's not just chicken, it's all animal products that can cause any autoimmune disease, right? Mm -hmm. And today, mm -hmm. so many people have autoimmune diseases that it's incredible. And, you know, it's so easy to avoid them. And it's not always easy to reverse them, but, mm -hmm. you know, you can reverse many of them, but the thing is that in order to reverse them, you have to remove the cause. That means you have to stop taking vaccinations, stop eating animal products. And of course, you know, you can get autoimmune conditions even by blood transfusions or um, organ transplants, which is why they give immunosuppressive treatment there. Mm -hmm. And you can also get uh, autoimmune conditions due to virus, for example, COVID is known to cause um, autoimmune diseases. And mm -hmm. COVID vaccinations are also known to cause autoimmune diseases, you know? And um, certain medicines can also land you with autoimmune diseases. So there's a whole re uh, set of reasons, but I knew that, you know, I had taken one vaccination that could have been the cause. Mm -hmm. I, I, I stopped as, you know, I went back to see if the dog was, uh, rabid or not and since the dog wasn't rabid I didn't go with any further vaccinations because I already knew that vaccinations were harmful mm. but I got the effects of the first vaccination so anyway uh, but you know so many people have vaccinations and don't get COVID so yeah. I knew that I had to do something I don't get uh, an autoimmune disease so mm -hmm. I knew that it had to do something to do with me also. And I looked at my disease, which was complete paralysis. And I was discussing with a friend who is also homeopath. And we came to the conclusion that what my body was trying to say was slow down. Because mm -hmm. I was working too hard, traveling all over the world, teaching, patients, everything. Mm. And so this made me move from Bombay to Oroville, which is more in nature, mm -hmm. which is what I really needed mm. and uh, allowed me to heal much better because I knew that I had to change something drastic. Now, I was already almost vegan and after that, I soon became completely vegan, but that wasn't enough. I needed to also change uh, my lifestyle and I didn't know how to reduce my practice when I was in Bombay because you know I would be in a busy practice and come home at eight at night and then my phone would start ringing so I didn't really have a lot of time I was working really hard and I knew that the only way to get away from my patients was to leave so I moved to all of it <laughs> yeah I think that's a that's a very you know there's many with autoimmune conditions it's not ever just one thing that leads to, you know, just this one thing happened and now I've got this, you know, it's a, it's an accumulation of many different things and each thing has its role to play. Like, you know, the, the, the bad diet, the, yeah, some different types of medications, uh, uh, stress can play a big role, lack of rest and no, you know, not getting enough sleep. All of this builds up over time and, and then the toxic matter and the body builds up and, and we get sick and you know if it reaches a certain level then we're really really sick um right. which is where a lot of these autoimmune conditions come in so yeah and i uh, was really really sick like it took really, me six really months sick. to even get into a wheelchair you know out of mm. that bed six months my goodness wow amazing story 
So that's kind of led you to try and help other people and, and inspired you to really get, I guess maybe it's your, yeah, I guess it's your inspiration to see how can I help other people to overcome their diseases as well. So let's well, talk about, actually, maybe not. When I, was, when I was practicing, I started hmm. telling my patients about how a whole plant-based diet or not really, at that time it wasn't so whole as much as plant-based diet. Right. How a plant-based diet could help them. Hmm. And I saw so many patients and I saw that, you know, many of them were very enthusiastic, but they didn't do it. Hmm. And then I started seeing some patients who were really, really sick, one foot in the grave. And so they were willing to do everything. And, you know, they were the ones who got well. Mm -hmm. Nobody thought that they could get well. But they got well with me because they didn't have a choice and they did everything that I suggested in the form of changing their diet and they got well. I had a severe case of bipolar disorder, diabetes, a heart disease, you know, all kinds of severe cases that were getting better. But my normal, like, you know, colds and diarrhea and uh, whatever, you know, asthma, and those weren't getting better because they were not willing to change. So I decided that the only way to help them change was to feed them and make them realize that it's not a deprivation. So I started seminars, which are a full day workshop called Peas versus Pills. And I saw breakfast before they started, lunch, and a heavy snack so they wouldn't need supper. And that's when I started seeing the change, you know, food really works because our food is so delicious, but nobody realizes that it could be delicious to eat the way nature or God meant us to eat. You know, every animal knows this, but we kind of lose it along the way because we're taught to eat by our culture, our society and advertisement. Absolutely. And so let's uh, perfect uh, opportunity to talk about Sharon. And I've been to some seminars that you have done. And it's just a wonderful event. You know, the food is brilliant. Uh, the information is brilliant. And you get so many people to come along and, and listen to your information. So, you know, why uh, did you decide to create Sharon and then tell us about the work that you do? Well, Sharon actually started because I always used to think holistically, you know, and I knew that um, the only way we can heal is heal ourselves. But then if we don't have a good environment, we can't heal ourselves. Hmm. And, uh, you know, we're destroying the environment. And so animals don't thrive. And we actually have to live in a symbiotic relationship. You know, so uh, Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. I realized that people are sick because they're disconnected. Because I started getting well when I came back to nature from Bombay, which is a big, big, you know, busy city, to Oroville, which is much more closer to nature. And I realized that people don't, know the things that I know not because it's not in their mind they already know everything I only call my seminars unlearning mm. you know because everyone knows everything but they're not in touch with that knowledge that we all have through our instincts and the only way we can get in touch with it is to be in touch with nature and animals because they are in touch with that. They mm. know everything. And we are not dumber than them, right? So that's how it all started. And then, you know, I started telling my patients. The patients weren't listening, except if they were, you know, one, they had one foot in the grave. And so I started the peas versus the pills. And then I thought, yes, I have a room full of people. And sometimes there would be 50 and sometimes there would be 100. But what's 100 in a whole world? Like nothing was changing in the environment and definitely nothing was changing for the animals because of my little peas versus pills seminars. So I knew that I had to do 
things like training other people to do the work I do. And now we have training programs, like consultation training programs for doctors and nutritionists and um, also facilitator training programs because we have a lot of cooking classes. And you know, I think that the cooking classes help so many people because they're fun and it's rewarding because you have all that food. And, uh, and now all our cooking classes are online and it's even better because people can join from all over the world or get the recording. And so everyone knows that they can do it, you know? So uh, before, say, if my success rate was less than 50%, because, you know, even though you buy a book or you go to a seminar, it doesn't mean you change overnight, right? So, so my success rate was less than 50%. And now I would say it's more than 50%, you know, like mm -hmm. going over to... 70% or 80%. That doesn't mean that everyone cannot succeed. Everyone has the potential to succeed, but sometimes we don't do it. We have other priorities, right? So, yeah. And I really, you know, at least in India, I'm really appreciative of all the entrepreneurs who are making it easy for people who want to do it because now you can get a tiffin service so that the food can come to your home, you know, whole food plant-based, so the rest of the family isn't doing it, you can still get well. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that if one person in the family gets better, the others are looking and they do, they do shift. Prime example. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Shami's got better and now the whole family has changed. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very true. It's very true. Um, so, I mean, absolutely, I think the more people and you know you shouldn't think that you know you're 100 people you know that those 100 people go and tell another you know 10 people each and it's kind of it's a ripple effect you know and i think it it definitely makes a difference it's it's i guess it's small to start off with but you know the the longer it goes i mean you've probably got thousands and thousands of people on your you know that you've met and spoken to throughout the whole sharon organization now so we have like you know, now we have more than 100,000 on our database because, yeah. I mean, we are just, we've been working for so many years now. That's right. Absolutely. So where did the interest come when it comes to diabetes? Because we get a lot of questions about diabetes, especially because of the misconceptions around what causes diabetes. Uh, and a lot of people are told that diabetes is a disease of sugar when it when it isn't that's a symptom high sugar is a symptom of of the diabetes so i guess with the with the kind of common thinking that it's bad to eat carbohydrates when you eat when you have diabetes or bad to eat fruits and things like that there's a lot of misconceptions around diabetes and why don't we start to uh, look at unpacking some of these misconceptions because a lot of people are told you know don't eat fruit for example if you've got diabetes or don't eat carbohydrates if you've got diabetes because it's going to increase your blood sugar when that's not always the case so i guess there's, there's so much to talk about maybe we can start from you know explaining what causes diabetes and then take it from there okay so you know the reason i wrote a book on diabetes is not because i think it's the most curable disease but because people can see the results right away. Mm -hmm. Now, also India has the one of the largest population of diabetes because they compete with China, you know, India and China compete with each other to be the top in diabetes. But um, I, some people say that one in three adults have diabetes in India. And that's you know, it's happening in the whole world. Younger and younger populations of people are getting diabetes. Now, the best thing about diabetes is that now everyone has a glucometer. They didn't have that when I became a doctor, but now any diabetic would have a glucometer and they can check their blood sugar on a day-to-day -day basis. So if they change their diet, they can see the results. For example, I was in the 21 day retreat just now 
And there was one guy who was on 20 medicines, 20 tablets, not, not 20 different medicines, but 20 tablets a day. And he came out on four. And those were not for diabetes. He got rid of his diabetes almost in the first week or 10 days, you know. Uh, and several medicines for diabetes. Now, that is the power of changing the diet. And as you said, sugar, sugar is not the cause of diabetes. We believe that sugar is the cause of diabetes. But high blood sugar is the result of diabetes. The cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. And the cause of insulin resistance is fat in the intramuscular cells. And uh, what I mean, sorry, is the intramuscular fat, the fat inside the muscle cells. And so we have to remove the fat in the diet. And where is the fat coming from? The oil, the ghee, the butter, but of course the animal products. You know, if you boil milk, you get fat on top. If you boil chicken, you get fat on top. If you boil fish, you get fat on top, no matter which animal product you get fat on top. Now, this is totally different from plants that have fat. For example, peanuts contain fat, therefore you make peanut oil or peanut butter, and so does sesame or coconut. But if you boil peanuts, you don't get a layer of fat on top, right? Why? Because they're held with fiber. And that's the same thing that happens in our body, that if you have a lot of food with fiber, the fiber holds on to the fat and actually takes the fat out of the body. So what has fiber? Plants. All plants have fiber, but if you refine them, they don't have fiber. So don't peel your vegetables. Minimize peeling the fruits. Peel only the things which a monkey would peel. That means the things which you can peel with your bare hands. The things that nature designed for us to peel. Right? And eat foods as whole as possible, eat mainly plant-based foods, I would say only plant-based foods, and diabetes begins to leave pretty quickly. Now, unfortunately, diabetes has become so common that there are newer and newer medicines every day. And there's a whole set of medicines called the sulfonylureas, which include glycoside and glimiparide and so on, that actually cause your pancreas to produce more insulin. And this leads to a burnout and then doctors put you on insulin. Mm. And this is happening everywhere. And if you have a burnout, that means your pancreas stops working and you're on insulin, this is harder to reverse right. because now you've burnt out the pancreas. So there's some cases of diabetes that can be reversed. Oh my, you know, do we have a lot of rainy weather. Should I go on or should I hold out? This is, the carry on, comes? carry on. That's fine. We can still see. Okay. So there's some cases of diabetes that um, can reverse easily and quickly. And there are other cases that can't. And so when I see my patients, I take them off those medicines as soon as possible so that, you know, they can get better. Yeah, that's absolutely. And, and I think that big misconception that we need to stop sugar um, actually makes the insulin resistance even worse because when you take sugar out, what do you increase? You increase fat, right? So when you take away carbohydrates, you automatically are increasing your fat and, and that's making the resistance even worse and making your body work even harder and increasing the amount of interest, um, you know, cellular fat in the muscles. And yeah, we end up becoming more, um, I guess, sensitive um, to the situation, which causes us to, you know, the people that go on the high fat diets, as soon as they introduce any kind of carbohydrate back into their diet, it's even, you know, the blood sugar spikes even more. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really fascinating subject, um, diabetes, um, especially because it can be resolved. Can you know Actually, you can have as much fruit as you want. Like mm. in our 21 day retreat, we have a rule that don't mix fruit with other meals. Okay. But we yes. always start our day with green smoothie and fruit. 
Mm -hmm. And um, they are allowed to either have a meal or have fruit and green smoothie for lunch and dinner. And since many people have been deprived of fruit, mm. or they actually realize that fruit is their favorite food because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we have high quality fruit there and everything's organic. They realize that fruit is their favorite food anyway, which is instinctively our favorite food. Because if you were on a farm and you saw fruits and vegetables growing, you would pick fruits first. So they switch to fruits for meals and they get better really fast. It's almost like the highway to health, mm. you know, just being on fruit. And so we have a lot of results. And, you know, the best part of the 21 day retreat is that there's so many people together so they can see each other and see what other people are doing. And it's like doing it in a whole group is so effective as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Talk talk to us about uh, some of the myths that you hear about diabetes and what some of the participants in your program tell you. And 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 you know, let me, let's kind of let's do some myth busting around. This is the myth. What is the actual uh, situation that's going on in the body? So I've heard, as as I already told you, sugar is not the sugar. cause. You can eat as much fruit as you like. Yes, but not fruit juice. Yes. Not a refined a form of fruit, right? Yes. Whole fruit, as much whole fruit as you like. Yes. The second myth is that you should eat meals every two hours. Not at all. You should only eat when you're hungry. Mm. And you should try to minimize your medicines as soon as possible because the medicines sometimes make you hungry and make you eat more and make you put on weight. You know, since our body is always working to heal, when someone gets diagnosed with diabetes, before they get diagnosed, often they lose weight. And that's because the body is reducing the number of cells that need insulin so that it can manage the situation. But then they go to a doctor to find out why they're losing weight. And the doctor diagnoses diabetes and gives them medicines. And then they start putting on weight, which only makes their diabetes worse in the end. Right? So, so the urgency is to eat the right food and to reduce the medicines. And for that, you need a doctor to reduce the medicines. Otherwise, you can actually do all of this all by yourself. You know, like we also have a 21-day online diabetes reversal program which people can use, especially if they're not on medicines, if they've just been diagnosed with diabetes, and if they are willing to not go on medicines and just get that glucometer and start working, they can get well all by themselves. The only reason someone with diabetes needs a doctor is to reduce the medicine. Okay, so that's the second myth. The third myth is that fats are good for you. People actually replace carbohydrates with fats. For example, I know someone who is a doctor himself and he says that the kind of diet I serve is not okay for him because he has diabetes and so he should have a lot of fried foods so they're filling but he never got cured of diabetes. Right? No. Fats, fats are the cause and so we have to remove fats and most people don't know that fats are the cause and many people don't know that dairy is full of fat and yeah. animal products are full of fat and that actually the fat in animal products is worse than the plant-based fat mm. and many people don't know that fiber heals right yeah and then you know one more thing is that vitamin d deficiency causes diabetes and many people don't know that so mm. everyone should get their vitamin D levels checked and supplement if necessary properly. Yes. So these are some of the myths that I can think of. Do you think? Okay, you've are? just jogged. You've just jogged my memory because when I was at your seminar, you were talking about things like tea and coffee and environmental yes. pollutants. I think yes. I think really most people don't yeah. have any idea about this. Right. So. You know, tea and coffee raise blood sugar and blood pressure. Thank you for remembering all that. Mm. And there's one more that, you know, diabetes is a hormonal problem. 
Hmm. And all our hormones are orchestrated by the pituitary gland. It's a gland at the back of our brain. And when one hormone goes out of balance, others do too. Yeah. And one of the ways that our hormones go out, that's why, you know, some people have diabetes along with hypothyroidism or PCOD or hmm. infertility. And many people have erectile dysfunction with diabetes hmm. and prostate enlargement and so on and so forth right? Mm -hmm. uh, hormonal problems all kind of come together. Now, uh, why do we get hormonal problems? Because our, uh, it can be because of hormones from outside and all animal products contain hormones. Mm -hmm. Dairy is full of hormones, not because these animals are given hormones, but because these animals produce hormones anyway, right? Like we do. Okay, yeah. so animal products are dangerous. Uh, sometimes we're given hormones as treatment. For example, steroids or hormone replacement therapy or infertility treatment and so on. Then chemicals are hormone disruptors. Mm. And we, you know, we are exposed to chemicals in a number of different ways. One is through the food or what we put in our mouth. For example, the non-organic foods, etc. Mm. Right? And packaged foods are full of chemicals. Otherwise, they won't have that long shelf life. Yes. As well as, you know, various processed foods. So, uh, sometimes we don't realize that sugar is a chemical. Mm. Right? And so is oil because these things can last on the shelf forever and, mm, yeah. and foods don't right yes i think i'll always food. remember one thing i'll always remember one thing he told me he said the longer the shelf life the shorter your shelf life. <laughs> yeah. i'll never forget that <laughs> yeah true yeah and then, I, then mm. sorry go go ahead actually while we're on the topic of oil i think it's very important because there's a lot of um, I guess a communication around oil, even the even in the plant-based scene, where you know there's certain people in the plant-based community that are uh, promoting oil. In fact, I saw one recent promotion as a superfood of olive oil. So you know, let's just talk about oil and and what it can do to the body, because I think there's a lot of now confusion happening that actually should we be including oil in our diet? And we get asked this question a lot now. Should I be including olive oil if I've got IBD or any other situation? And so I, I, so we don't recommend it. But I simplify this and say that we should only eat foods that were given to us by nature or God. And yeah. oil, or like sugar, is a man-made substance. In fact, mm. if you eat a lot of sugar, it's converted to fat in your body. And yeah. oil is anyway converted to fat in your body, right? Mm. So oil not just causes diabetes, but it also causes heart disease and hypertension. And one of the main reasons we want to get rid of diabetes is because it has a whole host of complications, one of which is heart disease and hypertension, and the other is erectile dysfunctions and eye symptoms and gangrenes and mm. you know um, wounds that don't heal and so many different complications you know, of, of diabetes. But coming back to those chemicals, chemicals are hormone disruptors. And many times, and, and you were asking me about those myths, and that's, that's really important, you know. Many times we don't realize that it's not just the chemicals in our food, mm. but toothpaste is often a set of chemicals that we put in our mouth every day. And mm. the only reason we do it is because we're not looking at the ingredients. Mm. So I often tell people that, you know, just look at the ingredients and check out the ingredients. See what are the side effects of those ingredients, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there's also a whole set of um, chemicals that we put on our body. Did you know that everything we put on our body is absorbed in less than 26 seconds? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. And shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and... Uh, you know, makeup and hand sanitizers. And I have mm. to tell you that like diabetes grew in the pandemic because some people were obsessed with hand sanitizer, mm. using them all the time, you know, wherever they go, they were even spraying hand sanitizers on the 
food that comes in a package in their house thinking that they would sanitize the food mm. before they eat it i mean all kinds of weird things happened during the pandemic mm. you know yeah i mean less less activity less social connection more staying indoors so less you know and then eating eating and sitting and watching tv instead of going outside and so obviously all these things are are setting you up for weight gain and 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 obviously more fat in in, in your system yeah. which is going to increase and all the chemicals that they're spraying in their house and everywhere they go right mm-hmm. absolutely those yeah hand sanitizers and then you know chemicals enter through inhalation that means all the incense and the uh, scented candles and the air fresheners and the um the toilet cleaners and the window cleaners and all those sprays that you you know mm. there was a time in india when you would go into a five star hotel and they would have air fresheners going on every few hours and everyone would get hormonal problems there because mm. uh, this is harmful and many people don't realize this they think that it's something great to have a scented candle or to have air fresheners in their house yeah you know yeah and then absolutely. of course the environmental pollution which we can only stop adding to maybe right yeah absolutely so that's such a fascinating thing when i learned that the the hormonal issues with diabetes because you only hear about the fat you know if you're only if you know first of all you have to be aware to look for that that the fat is the issue but there's not enough discussion around the the chemical and hormone disruptors that can affect um diabetes as well and actually you know vitamin d is a hormone mm yes and therefore lack of vitamin d can cause diabetes what what do you recommend also, for vitamin d because this is a i've i've read a lot of different things around what is an acceptable level of vitamin d how much you should supplement with I mean I I know in India that it's very hard to get vitamin D from the sun because of all the uh you know the pollution and things because of all the pollution yeah. maybe it's easier where you are possibly mm. but mm. you know in a city like Sydney or maybe Melbourne I don't know how bad the pollution is luckily mm. you have the sea all around you and maybe the pollution yeah. is a bit better but I come from Bombay and I live in Oroville and there's nature and sea around in both those places and people don't get enough vitamin d so mm. we uh, you know when i do a consultation they always have a set of blood tests that we check up and one of them is vitamin d mm-hmm. and mostly people are deficient and we supplement and mm. you know the normal levels are between 30 and 100 ng per ml and your units might be different out yeah. there okay but anyway um those are the normal levels we should put them in the normal levels and not below that mm. so how do you know that you, your vitamin d is low look i found out about this the hard way because i wasn't fully aware of it when i um i until i was 50 i never had a single cavity and then i found i had a cavity at the age of 50 and i since my diet was already really good i went to the dentist to find out why i had a cavity and i used to be in nature in oroville and with the sun and near the sea and i still had cavities now i do spend a lot of time indoors because i'm working but um i do spend did spend a fair amount of time outdoors in the sun as well and uh, i used to not go in a car but on a bicycle or a bike and so i was a bit surprised and i found that my vitamin d was low and that was the cause of my cavity so it's really important to check and supplement and almost anybody can have low with vitamin d and low vitamin b12 it's mm. not just vegans yeah Yeah, absolutely. Do you know the the reason why the low vitamin D causes the might cause some cavities? What what is the I guess the vitamin D is required for calcium metabolism oh, and without uh, enough vitamin D you have lack of calcium can cause osteoporosis and uh even you know 
uh, and teeth are bones and they get affected. Yes. Mm. But a lack of vitamin D can also cause depression and psychiatric mm -hmm. disorders and sleep disorders because sleep is also, you know, like melatonin uh, affects sleep. But so these are all hormones. Hormones are interconnected. So lack of vitamin D can also cause sleep disorders. So it's right. so important to get these two vitamins, B12 and D, mm. checked and supplemented, you know yeah absolutely okay i think we've covered a huge amount of information uh thank you so much for sharing all this knowledge and i think a lot of people will really appreciate uh some of the things that you know we don't hear about very often you know especially with the diabetes and the chemicals we don't hear about it a huge amount and so there's always a huge amount of talk about diet and and uh, i think it's very important that we share that uh, with with the audience um so yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, and it's lovely to see you after quite some time. Oh, the lights got off again. <laughs> and my lights gone again. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, it was, it was lovely to see you. And um, yeah, please uh, take care. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch, obviously. But um, yeah, uh, I think you're doing amazing work. And I'm very grateful for everything that you do and what Sharon does and what I've learned from you about you know health and healing um very very grateful so thank you so much and um yeah thank you shukul and likewise i'm really like I, I really appreciate all the work you do and i remember having sent you a patient who you took a lot of care of and did, that patient did so well and it's so grateful so and yes. i know i sent you more than one patient but this patient <laughs> came to Oroville and i uh, follow them up and yeah so thank you for all the amazing work you do yeah no you it's just a it's a real like it's a blessing to know this information and be able to help people and uh, it's just a wonderful thing when people get better it's nothing more rewarding i don't think um but yes yeah, so that's the that's the session everyone i, I hope you enjoyed uh, everything that dr nandita shared with us here today and I'd really like to thank you for, for joining us and um, you know, incredible, incredible knowledge uh, that uh, Dr. Nandita has. Now, if you've um, been listening to this on the podcast or watching this on YouTube, please share this because not very many people know this information. So hit the share button and, and put it all over your social media so that we can, we can share this knowledge to, uh, out to the world. And if you're on YouTube uh, and you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you get to uh, follow our work. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll be up notified of all our future uploads. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, which helps uh, you know reach more people on the uh, on the channel. And if you have any questions, there's a comment section, so please ask away, and we'll do our best to answer. Uh, but for now, Dr. Nandita, thank you so much. And um, for everyone watching, make sure you eat plants and lots of them. Take care. Bye-bye.